Hey, what's up guys? I thought today I'd bring you a little video uh, of me playing some ladder games against some really high level units. Um, I know people often like to blame levels for losses and so on and say the game is pay to win. Um, obviously levels are a big advantage, but I just wanted to show you guys how it is possible to overcome levels. So the first one we're going to go into is this against Master. This guy's 15th on GDI. Um, as you can see, his entire deck is level 15 max trained. This is an absolutely maxed out deck. This is as high level as you can get. So, I thought we'd start with this one. Um, those of you who know, those of you guys who've seen some of these guys play with their high levels might know that Master is perhaps not the scariest whale in the game. Uh, but he is all level 15s, so I thought I'd show you this one. So we'll speed it up at the start. So uh, I played against this guy a few times. I know that his deck is shocks and vehicles. That's why I open lasers because I know he's going to open dogs every game. Uh, so I get lasers out here. I save up here. I was planning to make um, marauders but changed my mind when I see him making a second dog squadron. So obviously he makes the shocks and I respond with a chem buggy. It's really important against uh, really high level opponents to use hard counters like chem buggy versus shocks. Because you can't afford to trade with them uh, if their units are good against yours. So as you can see here, he missed Micros, his Pitbull, and just loses the missile to me blocking off both pads. So another Chucky comes out. Uh, we go and take on these Shock Troopers. He does a reasonable job keeping away, but, uh, you know, not good enough. A little bit close here. I get some chip damage on his Orca. And again, I get some more chip damage on his Orca. As you can see, I'm staying, staying away from his Orca. I don't want to drive into this because this will fire. So I send this Mutant Marauder to eat the shots, and then I kill his, uh, kill his Orca. Uh, send another Ken Buggy up here. I drill pods to make sure I have all of the pads. And then I send my Stealth Tank to intercept his incoming Orca. And as you can see, easily block him off and take a second missile. Now, I'm not suggesting this guy played amazingly, but he didn't play absolutely horrendously or anything. He, but he, he just had all level 15s. I wanted to show you guys that really... All level 15s while scary is not something that's completely unbeatable and my levels aren't even that good here as you can see i've got three four four thirteens and a couple of 11s and i beat a guy with all 15s so i want to show you guys that uh okay so the next one i'm going to show you is this is a really good one this one's good this is against exum so exum i don't know again you guys might not know uh i don't know how much you guys follow my stream i don't know how much you guys know about the the top ladder players Exum is really good. Exum is actually like a very good player. He used to play No Harvester Aggro a lot. Um, but I, I talked to him a lot on, on Discord and he asked my advice and so on. And I've said to him like, dude, you need to stop doing No Harvester Aggro every game. Like just, just learn to play the game properly. And he did. And he's a really talented player now. So I'm going to show you how this game goes as well. Um, spoiler alert, obviously I do win. Uh, that's the <laughs> point of the video is to show that you can beat levels. So he opens wheels. Uh, because we're playing as Nod, I open lasers because we don't want to get punked by a bike rush. And my war factory doesn't have tank or bikes in it. So he makes flamers and uh, a missiles, so I make the chem buggy. So as you can see here, this isn't going great for me. Uh, my chem buggy kills his lasers really quickly. Uh, and I get my wheels down here to kill his flamers, and then my lasers go on his wheels. I think I actually misplay this a little bit. Yeah, I misplay. I moved my lasers by accident. I was trying to retarget. And end up shooting the flamer squad and he actually does end up taking the first missile but that's mostly because i misplayed there like if i killed the wheels i would have been able to block and i would have taken that first missile so we'll uh, speed up a little but yeah here i start making mutant marauders um he's got a lot of vehicles so this deck i'm playing here is from srpss he's, he's been refining it really talented player he was the winner of my coliseum this month or last month i should say um basically the idea of the deck is you get mutant marauders and you protect them with a chem buggy a really strong deck guys like uh i think mutant marauders are actually pretty good now um i will say the deck is a lot better against nod than it is against gdi because the deck is quite weak to air it doesn't have good answers to orca or drones so if you do play against the meta gdi suzaku deck you are this deck is a little weak but against the meta nod deck like this very very strong as you'll see in this game so, anyway, back to the game. Uh, he kills my Harvester. I don't even bother defending it because there's no way I can get over there in time. So I just let his stealth tank kill it. 
But as you can see, we just set up Mutant Marauders on every pad. Mutant Marauders plus Chem Buggy. And uh, it's just impossible for him to clean it up in time. Like, you can see we down here, we kill everything. And yeah, we just take the second missile quite quite happily there. So, we're still doing okay here. The, the economy is reasonably even. I was able to kill his Harvester by sending Mutant Marauders at it. Mutant Marauders do a lot of damage to Harvesters. They, once you get a Mutant Marauder on Harvester, it goes down pretty quickly. Um... Yeah, more Mutant Marauders and, uh, and Chem Buggies. It really is just the, the game plan of the deck is just Chem, chem Buggy and Mutant Marauder with the drip, Drill Pod occasionally. He goes after my Harvester here, which I'm okay with, I don't care about that. A little swap here to get the units. Chem Buggy goes after his Drill Pod. If you actually notice there, the Mutant Marauders did almost all of the damage to the Drill Pod because it is a vehicle when you spawn it. Be careful when you're spawning your Drill Pod not to do it next to anti-vehicle units because that will happen. And as you can see, I just have complete control. And... This guy, it, it, you have to notice, the wheels are 14, the tank is 15, the stealth tank is 15. I think the lasers are 15s as well. And I'm playing with like level 11s here. So, as you can see, playing well and having the right matchup can actually be way more important than levels. Let's just take a quick look. Yeah, like 15, 15, 15, 14, 14. I'm playing with like 11s and 12s and a, and a few 13s. Um... So yeah, as you can see, if you have the right the right deck to fight their deck, like I think this deck is actually extremely good against the deck X and Brought. I think this deck is just very strong against Nod. And if you play well, you play tight, you can uh, you can end up winning the games. Okay, the last one I'm going to show you is this one. Uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce this guy's name. Uh, but he is an all-star career. This guy is kind of a monster. He's shown up on the ladder recently. A uh, very high level player. Very very high level. Pretty good at the game as well. Um, so this one I saved not just because of his levels, but also because I think this was just a really fantastic game. So I'll show you this one. Uh, so I'm playing classic not aggro in this game. Not the Mutant Marauder deck. So my levels are a little higher than they were with the Mutant Marauder deck. But as you can see, even off the bat, I've made 12s and he's made a 14 and a 15. So even right off the bat, I'm behind. Um, I think making bikes is a mistake in the Nod Mirror. As your first unit after wheels because then this is going to happen to you you're going to get a tank chasing you down and if you're not careful you lose your whole bike squad so he goes lasers i go into militants to counter it and i basically try and keep my tank near my militants to protect them from wheels and occasionally i get a cheeky shot on the bike so i'm okay with the militants dying they're pretty cheap i don't mind losing them um to kill off the unit that i killed there so his here comes a 14 stealth tank finishes off my my tank so this guy basically, because he's playing the artillery, he's cut the scorpion tanks. So he's playing stealth tank as a replacement for scorpion tank. Which I do think gives me a little bit of an edge. Because uh, the stealth tank is not a good replacement. So this missile gets a little tricky. He gets the wheels on because I don't block properly. If down here I'm in trouble. Uh, up here I'm, I'm doing okay because I've got a scorpion tank. But yeah, this is bad for me. Don't think there's any way I can recover here. And no, there isn't. I lose the first missile. Which is unfortunate. But you know, sometimes you lose missiles. Uh, so we push in our units here. This is to try and get good matchups because I knew I'd lost the missile. I wanted to use my units to fight his units in good matchups. So we get some militants on his, his lasers down here. So I'm basically looking to get my tank on his stealth tank whenever possible because a stealth tank volley won't kill a tank, but a tank can run down a stealth tank. Uh, yeah, you know, normal stuff here. I'm trying to stack up my tanks to get near his, uh, his tank and to negate his wheels. Then lasers against his bikes, get some flamers to kill his lasers. So he puts flamers, I see the flaming pod coming and move up to block it. Because I move my flamers up here and block. I'm also worried these guys are going to die. So I move these wheels onto the pad. Yeah, in fact the guys do die, but the wheels are there in time. And I'm blocking the stuff down here with my flamers. So this was uh, quite an intense micro required there, but we do end up getting him. A little bit of a heart explosion there. Um, so he's way too many stealth tanks at this point, which I noticed. I see he has three stealth tanks. So I move into lasers and a wheel squad to kill his flamers because uh, this is too many stealth tanks and he's pop capped on these things. But he can't make any money. So he realizes as well that he's super pop capped. Tries to send in the stealth tanks. That's why I pull back. I don't want to get double tapped by these stealth tanks. And I kill the low hit point one there. Uh, I get some damage on the other one. Like pretty good, pretty good for me overall. I think he might be looking to make artillery here. No, he makes another stealth tank. So I think that's an error. I think he had enough money to make an artillery there. Probably could have done so. Yeah, as you can see, he's just using stealth tanks to as a replacement for regular tanks. So we get wheels to go after this. Uh, my tank takes over over here. I get this tank dancing back and forth to try and fight both pads. He has a stealth tank coming and finish it off. 
Uh, I get more tanks. I think the, the fact that I have scorpion tanks is, is helping me a lot here. I get a scorpion tank to finish his harvester. And I drill pod up here and block down here. And then, yeah, as you say, I block, block off with the tanks. And there you go. Take him down. So as you can see, that one was a little bit closer in levels than the other two I showed you. But it was a pretty intense game. Um, I think if he had made the artillery, I would have been in a lot of trouble. But he never actually got managed to get one out. Good for me. Um, but let's just take a quick look at those levels. So this one, as I say, is a little bit closer. But even then, I mean, I have three 12s. And his lowest level is 13 on the artillery and the Ceph. He's got three, four 14s and a 15. I've got one 14 and three 12s, four 12s. Big level difference. Uh, but really, I wanted to show you this one where I'm massively out leveled. And this one where the levels are absolutely outrageous. I mean, he's all 15s and my highest is a 13. And I'm still running 11s and I still I still won that game very easily. So, yeah. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. I just thought I'd show you guys that, uh, you know, with the right strategy and the right tactics, you really can defeat levels. Levels are not the be-all and end-all. Obviously, they're an advantage. But, yeah, the game is really significantly less pay to win than a lot of the games of this ilk that I've tried. Um, other games of this nature that I've played, something, a level disadvantage like that, the game would just be immediately over. Your units wouldn't even function. And there'd be no way to win. But this game, obviously, you can control your units. There's a lot more you can do. Okay, guys. Uh, thanks for stopping by. And uh, don't forget to like and comment and subscribe. Alright, peace out.